Welcome to the recent approvals episode of the ASCO University weekly podcast. My name is Danielle Schaefer, and I'm an assistant professor at the Massey Cancer Center at Virginia Commonwealth University. My area of specialty is leukemia and lymphoma. Today, we will discuss the approval of evocitinib in patients with relapsed and refractory AML with a susceptible IDH1 mutation. As a background to today's discussion, somatic mutations of IDH have been identified in multiple tumor types, including AML and MDS. As a result of the mutation, there is impaired hematopoietic differentiation as well as epigenetic alteration. IDH mutations occur in approximately 20% of adults with AML and 5% of adults with MDS. IDH1 mutations occur in approximately 6-9% of adult AML patients. Enositinib was approved by the FDA in 2017 for adult patients with relapsed and refractory AML with an IDH2 mutation. On July 20th of 2018, evocitinib was approved by the FDA for the treatment of adult patients with relapsed to refractory AML with a susceptible IDH1 mutation as detected by an FDA-approved test. The approval of evocitinib in the relapsed to refractory setting was based on the results of a Phase one dose escalation and dose expansion study published in the New England Journal of Medicine. The primary objectives of the study were to assess the safety, maximum tolerated dose, and recommended Phase two dose. Of the 258 patients receiving study drug, 179 patients had relapsed to refractory disease. The median age was 67 with a range of 18 to 87 years. Patients had a median of two prior therapies, 24% had relapsed after transplant, and 59% were refractory to induction or reinduction. 59% had favorable risk cytogenetics. The most common co-occurring mutation was NPM1 in 26% of patients. A maximum tolerated dose was not defined, and evocitinib 500 mg was selected for dose expansion. The most common adverse reactions were fatigue, leukocytosis, arthralgia, diarrhea, dyspnea, edema, nausea, mucositis, QT prolongation, rash, pyrexia, cough, and constipation. In the overall population, 30-day all-cause mortality was 7%. The majority of deaths were related to disease progression or complications of underlying AML. No treatment-related adverse events leading to death were seen in patients with a starting dose of 500 mg. IDH differentiation syndrome is of special interest as early identification is necessary. It is similar to what has been described with ATRA and arsenic trioxide. In this study, IDH differentiation syndrome was reported in 19 patients and was of grade 3 or higher in 9 patients. Leukocytosis grade 2 or 3 accompanied differentiation syndrome in 7 of the 19 patients. Median time to onset was 29 days with a range of 5 to 59 days. Treatment included glucocorticoids, diuretics, and hydroxyurea if leukocytosis was present. With intervention, 17 of the 19 patients had resolution. The two remaining patients had differentiation syndrome at data cutoff. In the relapsed refractory population, the rate of complete remission or complete remission with partial hematologic recovery was 30.4%. The median duration of complete remission or complete remission with partial hematologic recovery was 8.2 months. The median time to response was 2.7 months. With the median follow-up of 14.8 months, the median overall survival was 8.8 months. Evocitinib is the first IDH1 inhibitor to enter the clinic for relapsed refractory AML and clearly represents a step forward for this population. The drug is overall well tolerated. Differentiation syndrome represents a unique toxicity as early recognition is critical. Practicing physicians may encounter difficulties differentiating disease progression from differentiation syndrome in some patients. Given the success of the drug in the relapsed refractory setting, it is now being combined with other therapies and moving earlier in the treatment course. Based on the encouraging results of a phase 1 study, evocitinib is currently being combined with intensive chemotherapy in a phase 3 study for newly diagnosed AML patients with IDH1 mutations. Although the drug is termed a success, the majority of patients are still dying of their disease. While some patients were bridged to transplant in the New England study, the benefit is not yet entirely clear. Additional questions emerge regarding co-mutations and IDH1 mutation clearance. Not surprisingly, in the study there was some preliminary data to suggest that patients with IDH1 clearance had longer durations of remission and survival. We anticipate better understanding as more patients are treated with the drug. Thank you for listening to this week's episode of the ASCO University Weekly Podcast. For more information on the treatment of AML, visit the comprehensive e-learning center at university.asco.org.